What's going on guys? King Raven here coming at you with another video today. So today we're going to do part two of Ask King Raven. I'm going to answer the questions. Got some really good questions right here. And then of course at the end y'all be able to come in with more questions and we can keep this dialogue going back and forth. Okay. Before we get into the video, let's do a quick wrist check. I'm wearing the Notice Retrospect. This is the Salmon Sky dial, is what they call it. Salmon Sky, so it's a light salmon dial. Beautiful dial. I love the indices. It is a sandwich dial, so they are, uh, like, sunken below, and the dial is on it. So it's got those really almost, like, teeth style I'll do a full review, but this is the first notice on the channel. First notice I've ever had. This is part of my collection. I did a trade for it, and it is a beautiful watch. Loving the notice retrospect. Okay, so grrr, let's get into some of these questions. I do have a couple of knives out here that I'll be bringing out. Just something to give my hands that don't stop moving a lot of times. Something to actually mess with, okay? So, first question that we got here is, what is a day in the life of King Raven? Well, I would love to say that it's all adventures and glamorous and all that stuff. But it's actually pretty plain Jane and kind of boring. <laughs> That's just being honest. So, day in the life. I get up early, okay? I get up at like 5.30. And y'all know I'm in a wheelchair. That's coming along. Some questions about the wheelchair that's coming up. But I'm in a wheelchair. So, with being a double amputee in a wheelchair, it takes a little bit of time to get ready. So... Uh, the first, let's just say, hour of the day, from 5.30, it's getting uh, cleaned, getting dressed, getting groomed, and stuff like that, and uh, then getting into the wheelchair to actually start my day. So, putting it about the 6.20 to 6.30-ish range, I start grabbing my cups of coffee, and I'll get breakfast shortly after I fix my cup of coffee. And in the mornings, I like to sort of look, catch a couple of YouTube videos and start while I'm eating my breakfast and everything, getting the wheels turning about what I want to do as far as my Instagram and YouTube videos for the day. All right, so then usually after I get the breakfast going and the coffee going and I'm done with my breakfast, coffee's still going. I drink a good bit of coffee and stuff like that, but all just Splenda or Equal, whatever. I don't drink any calories and everything. Uh, that'll come a little bit later. We'll, I'll address that, but uh, so it's just coffee. And then I'm getting thinking about what I want to do for the Instagram and YouTube. I will start taking the pictures. I always do my Instagram first. I might not load it first onto Instagram, but I actually take the pictures for the Instagram first. And then I'll decide what I'm going to do for the YouTube for the day. So sometimes I'll pre-record a YouTube video and y'all won't see it for a couple of days, a week, or whatever. But not often. Usually, the video that you're seeing today, uh, if you're watching on the day that it's uploaded, I recorded it that very day, okay? That's usually how mine goes. I don't have a backlog of pre-recorded stuff. If I know I'm going on a trip, I might record some, but... I record and then I'll edit and upload and y'all see it a little bit later on in that day. 
After I get all that stuff done, it's usually getting to be about lunchtime. So, uh, fix me, grab me a little bit of lunch and everything. And then, uh, that afternoon, it'll be a couple of videos and, uh, maybe a show that I want to watch on TV or something like that. Or if there's a test that I want to get done, okay? Something with, uh, just, you know around the house, something with uh, EDC stuff, if I'm doing something to a knife, if I'm doing something to a watch, you know, any of um, just daily tasks that I wanna get done, that usually takes place in the afternoons, okay? Then, uh, as we get towards the evening, uh, family members come home from work, so we'll have some conversations and stuff like that. And we'll decide what we want to do uh, for supper. And then, of course, once uh, we'll talk and watch some TV and once supper comes and everything, we'll eat that. And then we, we like to do a lot of family games, okay? So we still do games and everything. Everything from chess to card games and board games and... Uh, uh, card battle games. We do lots of different types of games. We we love to do that. And we love to spend that time together. Matter of fact, in this room, the uh, Raven Dining Hall is where we play a lot of our games on the uh, dining hall table. Okay. Uh, and then uh, as the evening wears on, if some more videos have come out, I might watch some videos and everything. And then uh, anyway, we just sort of settle in, we talk, and watch some TV. And it continues on. And then I go to bed right about 11 o'clock, okay? 11 o'clock is when I transition back into the bed. And then I will get up at 5.30 in the morning and wash, rinse, and repeat. So that's how normal days. Now, some days have doctor's appointments and you've got special things going on and different stuff like that. I'm talking about an average day. That's an average day in the life of King Raven, okay? Like I said... Kind of boring, kind of plain, okay? So, with that going into, what do you do for a living, all right? I, right now, and everything, I'll address right now. And just For uh, 12 years, I worked for a company. It was a payroll time and labor management company. I was in their billing department. I started... As a biller, and I worked my way up all the way to a uh, billing technician. Okay, so instead of doing the billing, I did some of the billing still, but I'd helped and taught and trained and different stuff like that, and was uh, a problem solver for the billing department. Uh, 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 is what I did on most of the time, but uh, so. Uh, I worked for them for 12 years, and uh, corporate COVID layoff in July of 2020. Now, uh, since then, a lot of stuff has happened, which I'll address in some of uh, the other questions, but now I am on full disability, okay? And like I said, that'll come, I'll explain why I'm on full of disability uh, when I answer one of the next questions. So right now, what I do for a living is I'm on full of disability. So that's where this YouTube channel and Instagram have really come into a big factor in my day, okay? Am I making money from the Instagram or YouTube? Absolutely not. Uh, my money is coming from being on disability right now, which is a 
third of what I was making from when I was actually employed before the corporate COVID layoff. Okay. All right. So, how long have you been in a wheelchair? Okay. This is starting to answer some of the stuff for why I'm on disability. Okay. How long have I been in a wheelchair? I've been in a wheelchair coming up on five years. Okay. So, um, my legs started deteriorating about really five years ago. Okay. Um, I started getting uh, severe ulcers on them. Okay. Uh, weeping, uh, draining, bleeding ulcers. And when I say I don't mean a spot here, I mean a spot there. I mean my legs from right below the knee, a little bit below the knee, down to my ankle. So that section of legs was covered in weeping, bleeding ulcers, okay? And uh, the condition that caused those weeping, bleeding, bleeding ulcers is called venous stasis, okay? Basically, the long and the short of that is my veins, your veins, the way your veins work, okay, is your arteries take the blood down from your heart and deliver it to all parts of your body. Your veins bring the blood back up to your heart. So inside your veins, every so often you have one-way valves, okay? So the blood comes up, your veins do this, and the blood goes by, and then once the blood goes by, your valves come like this, and it prevents the blood from going back down. More blood comes up, goes back down. Well, venous stasis and everything, the valves do not do this. They basically are like this. So the blood tries to come up, but they don't open to keep it going up. The blood just continues to fall back down. So, long and the short of venous stasis is I blew out my veins and my legs, okay? My, so, all the blood would go down, but would not want to come back up. So, I had to be in compression wraps to help keep the blood trying to come back up. So, what your... Uh, valves in your vein would do naturally, I had to do externally with compression, but because they had gotten so bad and everything like that, there was no amount of external that I could do that would suffice, so it was a gradual deterioration of my legs, okay? Uh, what, I'm going to go ahead and say this next question while I finish up how long I've been in a wheelchair. That was it. So, why did I have to have a double amputation? I've been talking about this. It's venous stasis, okay? So, at one point in my life, I was 550 plus pounds. I say plus pounds. Because I don't know how much plus. Back then when I was at my heaviest. The doctor's office scales were not the digital. They had the sliding bar thing with the weight. Okay. So on the bottom. All the way over was 500 pounds. On the top. The little weight. All the way over was 50 pounds. 
You add them both together, that's 550 pounds. I stepped on the scale and pegged it out immediately. So, I was 550 plus pounds, okay? Uh, that being heavy, okay? Now, uh, that was at my heaviest, but I was heavy and everything from junior high, I was in the, uh, let's say here, 300 pound range. And as it continued to go through high school and into my early 20s, it continued to rise, get to my heaviest, uh, 550 plus. And then uh, from there, I started losing weight because basically if I didn't do something, I would not be here. I would be dead by now, okay? That, everything just uh, would have stopped working and stuff like that. I have no doubt about that. So, I started losing weight, all right? Now, uh, I am probably around the 230-pound mark right now, which for being in a wheelchair and a double amputation and stuff like that, is still well too heavy. I still have weight I have to lose. But from 550 plus down to around the 230 mark and everything, I've lost over myself completely, okay? And no, I didn't have any gastric surgeries or anything like that. It literally was changing life habits and stuff uh, that has helped me lose weight. Now, I have to figure out this next chapter in losing weight because being in a wheelchair, it's not like I can just, like I used to, and go, go walking. I, I can roll around, but I live on a pretty steep hill and everything, and I would end up in the ditch down the road. All right, so, uh, and I don't, I have to have somebody drive me. I don't have a handicap vehicle yet. I just have to transfer into the seat and let somebody drive me. So I can't just go to some place on my own and do, and stuff like that. So I've got to figure out how I can incorporate more exercise into my uh, lifestyle. I have hand weights, okay? So that's great. I can build up muscles and stuff like that. That's great. But it doesn't really help with the uh, cardio aspect and stuff like that. But getting on, okay. Why did I have to have uh, double amputations? The venous stasis, like I've been talking about, that blew out the veins in my legs, okay? Basically, there is no cure. The damage was done. So, I had a couple of options, okay? Um, wound care, which I was doing wound care for almost three years, okay? So, compression wraps, different types of compression wraps, una boots all sorts of stuff, going to wound care, sometimes twice a week, sometimes once a week, uh, every week, uh, them taking it, debreathing, all those ulcers, and just, it just constantly, bleeding. I was in constant pain. I don't mean I hurt every once in a while. I mean the pain from the ulcers because I had to keep them squeezed as well, so I'm squeezing, just blooding, bleeding, oozing ulcers, okay? There was no relief from the pain. The pain was constant, okay? It just depend on the severity of the pain, all right? I had literally for over two years, go almost three, four years, I was stuck in my room, okay? my bedroom, in a recliner, 
And I slept in the recliner as well. It was a reclining love seat, actually, a powered reclining, with my legs elevated and underneath the elevated thing, I had pillows, so my legs were on top of actual pillows, and on top of the pillows was puppy pads because they would bleed and ooze through the wraps and everything, so to keep from ruining pillows and everything, that would just go onto the puppy pads, and I would just be leaning back, and I would be in constant pain uh, 24 hours a day. Uh, I, if I stood up to use the restroom, uh, that was, and the restroom was just a portable uh, john that was in my room, uh, so one of those uh, porter uh, potty, whatever you want to call them, and everything that was in my room, standing up, taking one step, spinning around, sitting down, and everything like that. Two steps, I'm crying and everything. The pain was that bad, okay? And then getting back into the thing, it was just as bad and everything. There was... I can't describe the, the pain and everything. It was just... It was constant, and any time I had to get up on them and everything, it was excruciating and everything. So I did literally nothing for three years. Couldn't do anything. The only time I got out of the house was doctor's visits. And the only reason I got out of the house for them is because I had to. Okay. So, I lost that time. I'll never get that time back. But it is what it is. Okay. So, it basically came down to, all right, look, we've tried all this wound care. We've tried all this stuff. Nothing works okay it's still just the exact same thing not getting any better actually getting worse okay so uh my options were continue with the wound care and open myself up to the different infections because those ulcers would give me infections in my leg and i would have to be pumped full of very strong antibiotics on a regular basis. So every uh, month, two months, it was antibiotics, antibiotics to get down the infection. So I was opening myself up to sepsis and stuff like that. So continue wound care and possibly open myself up to stuff like sepsis or stuff like that. That was that option and still be in that constant pain uh, the whole time. Or I could get them cut off and be in a wheelchair and everything like that uh, the rest of my life. But I wouldn't have that pain. Okay? So for me, it was a no-brainer and everything. I said, cut them off. Did it take almost a full year going from doc, uh, through a couple of doctors before I could get the plastic surgeon who did my abdominal and, uh, and uh, groin surgeries? Uh, that's a whole nother story question. Why did I have to have abdominal and groin surgery and stuff like that completely? more uh question but uh same plastic surgeon to p get him to agree to do the amputations because uh technically where i was my legs weren't like threatening at that moment okay at the moment could i get sepsis and it be life threatening at any moment yes but at that moment, it was not life-threatening and everything. It's just I had no life, and I was going through this completely back and forth. So, I said, okay, take, if we can't get them healed, if I'm going to have to be doing this and have absolutely no life, okay? I'm not living, I'm existing. Take them off.
Let me heal up. Yes. Will I have to deal with the hardships of being a double amputee in a wheelchair? Yes. But I'll be out of that paint and I'll be able to get into a wheelchair and actually go and do. So, I said, take them all. And uh, that was the best decision I could do. Is this hard? Yes. This is hard. That was unbearable. Am I still uh, healing from the inside and different dealing with different stuff? Sure, yes, I am and everything, but it is much more manageable the way it is now than where it was, okay? So that's why, excuse me, guys, all right, and girls, uh, that's why I had to have double amputations, okay? All right. Did it hobbies? Okay, of course I'm a collector. I love watches. I love knives. Uh, Spider Coke Manix and M390 with antique copper uh, scales from Platania. Antique copper ball cage. Love this knife. It's outstanding. Yes, I have a collector. I love knives, I love watches, I love flashlights, movies, audiobooks. I have dyslexia, I love books, but I read very, very slowly, okay? So, I like audiobooks. I have like 210 audiobooks, and I've listened to like 207 of them. I've got a couple that I haven't listened to yet. And uh, some of my audiobooks I listen to several times. So I love books. I love my audiobooks, okay? Um, I would even listen to them while I was working. Uh, so uh, books is a hobby. Movies are a hobby. Games. I love games. Uh, I used to love to go to fishing and hunting. I hope to be able to get back to doing some fishing and everything. Uh, but right now, with the, the wheelchair, I really don't have a place accessible for me to go and be able to fish from and everything right at this moment. Hopefully, I will be able to get a place. So, but I love to fish. I love to uh, hunt and everything. Guns are a hobby. Uh, one gun hobby that I still can do, which it was a big hobby of mine, is go shooting. I can go to the gun range, whether it's the rifle range, the shotgun range, or the pistol range. I can go to the range again, which I missed out for like those three years and everything like that. But now that I'm in a wheelchair, I can go and I can enjoy my shooting and hunting again because I can do that stuff from being in a wheelchair, okay? So that's a big hobby of mine is going and actually shooting. Uh, it's something that I enjoy to do a lot. Uh, my rifles and everything, just about all of them, but one rifle, yeah. All but one rifle, my Ruger 1022, all the rest of my rifles, I built myself. So that's another hobby that I like to do. I like to build the on the AR platform, okay? So I built several in several different calibers and stuff like that, different barrel lengths and stuff uh, on the AR platform. Uh, so that... That's pretty built the most of my hobbies that I enjoy is that stuff right there. Why do I go by King Raven? Okay, that actually comes from some of the books, okay? Um, there is a historical book uh, about the true origins of Robin Hood. Robin Hood was actually a, a real person, okay? Um, it's not the character that you hear in fantasy. Robin Hood was a Celtic 
uh, landlord, okay? He did not start off to be a landlord. He was born into that family, but then a lot of tragedy happened and stuff like that that he has to overcome from, so he basically lost everything, okay? So he had all, uh, or all that you could hope to have. He had prominence and basically uh, lost all of it and everything. And the actual uh, the invaders, the 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 uh, Franks, had come in and had basically taken everything from him. So basically, on his quest to gain back what he had been taken from him, he became uh, what we know as the fairy tale of Robin Hood. It really didn't happen that way, but in the Franks and everything, um, uh, they would call it uh, Rye Bran uh, E Hood, which is, Rye is uh, ancient or old school Celtic for king, okay? Bran is ancient old school Celtic for king. Raven and ye hood and everything, uh, which ye y e and h u d okay, uh, was the forest okay, so it was King Raven of the forest okay, which Rye Brown ye hood became Robin Hood okay as the stories and legends and everything were told from the truth. Usually about all of our really, you know, passed down legends sometimes started from a bit of actual factual history. And then it grows like this. Same thing with Robin Hood, okay? So he actually was Rye Bran E. Hood before he was Robin Hood. Rye Bran is King Raven. So I went by in a lot of the gaming communities and uh, uh, different stuff like that as Rye Bran, okay? Which I could have said, you know, on my channel, you know, Rye Brand here and everything, but nobody would know what in the world I'm talking about. So I did the translation, and that translation is King Raven. So King Raven is actually the English translation for Rye Brand, which is the historical uh, roots of Robin Hood. A little bit of ancient Celtic. Scott Irish heritage, if you could not tell by the pale skin and everything like that, uh, I am Scott Irish heritage. Uh, so the Celtic heritage it suits and everything like that. So I did a lot of history reading and looking into Celtic history, and the true origins of Robin Hood is Celtic. So, I go by King Raven, Rye Brand. Uh, well, guys, that is all the questions. This was a little bit longer of a video, but I hope you enjoyed it. Please, if anything we talked about today brought up any questions that you would like to know more about, let me know, okay? I might talk about the um, uh, the uh, abdominal and groin surgery and everything like that. Uh, if you're curious about that, I know you asked about the amputations and stuff like that. So, you know, I, I'll be glad to go into that a little bit more. That actually took place before the amputations. Um, so, uh, any uh, 
questions, health related, anything like that, just let me know. Anything that uh, we talked about today that might have brought up another question as far as work or life or uh, anything family, whatever. It's a complete open book. Just I'd be glad to answer them. Just comment below and we'll do the next video. I'm going to put uh, just a video. I'm not going to link a playlist because these aren't related to any uh, playlist or anything. This is just a new series as Raven. I might create a playlist if we get enough of these. But So I'll just link a video and the Shield Arms watermark. Just click the Shield Arms uh, and you'll automatically be subscribed. Maybe you want to know where Shield Arms came from. I don't know. And everything, y'all just let me know what you have as far as curiosity. Okay? I really enjoy this. I enjoy interacting with y'all. I really, truly do appreciate y'all. Follow me on Instagram at Shield Arms. Y'all be safe out there. I'm King Raven, Rye Brand, and I'll catch you in the next video.